Everyone is trying to make plans for the future in the midst of the pandemic, including university students. New data from Ontario shows students are accepting university admissions offers at almost the same rate as before the pandemic. There are sharp contrasts among schools, but overall, there's almost no difference between this year and last, though much of the teaching will likely be done virtually. Enrollment numbers, especially from international students, is weighing heavily on schools across the country right now. Many post-secondary institutions rely on international students for funding. And as Mike Lecatur explains, there's concern some won't be able to return to class in the fall. Campuses across the country remain quiet as many post-secondary institutions have moved classes online for the foreseeable future. But that reduction in in-person learning won't mean a reduction in tuition. And that's significant for international students who often pay double compared to Canadian students at most post-secondary institutions. There should be an appropriate response in terms of tuition, so much we're paying since we are all, we are all affected by this. He launched a petition to convince his school to lower tuition for international students. Now, Dalhousie University recently announced it's raising tuition for all students by 3%, saying it will help maintain the high quality of academic programming. Now, the group that advocates for Canadian universities said in a statement, many universities are administering emergency bursaries and extending access to university residences for international students. Adding, Universities Canada is working with the federal government to help international students study in this country during the pandemic. All our efforts and investments might be in risky. The tuition is a concern for Adelou Simsek, but a more pressing issue is whether or not school delays caused by the pandemic will prevent her from finishing her degree before her student visa expires. The program in this one year, it, it, it might be very tough uh, to find a job and get Canadian experience and get PR studies. It's why the Migrant Workers Alliance for Change is calling on the government to give all international students permanent residency status since many aren't eligible for emergency government aid. There's an economic downturn uh, making it difficult for students to find um, employment, even survival jobs and employment that would um, give them access to permanent residency. Good morning everyone. In a statement, a spokesperson for the immigration minister responded, international students currently in Canada who had their classes moved online as part of efforts to flatten the curve of COVID-19 will not affect their eligibility for the post-graduation work permit program. Adding international students or other temporary residents can renew or extend their visas online. A helpful step, perhaps, but still not the long-term certainty those students are looking for. Mike LeCouture, Global News, Ottawa. Well, many Canadians struggling to pay the bills are relying on federal emergency benefits. Now the Canada Revenue Agency says 190,000 Canadians who received CERB payments they weren't entitled to have repaid them. But the Liberal government has failed to secure enough political support to fast-track emergency legislation related to other benefits. Our chief political correspondent David Aiken joins me to explain what's at stake. David. Well, Donna, the legislation is known as Bill C-17, and it proposes to do quite a few things. First, it would provide for sanctions against anyone found to have fraudulently received any CERB payment, pay back twice what was illegally obtained, and pay a fine of up to $5,000 or face up to six months in jail. But C-17 does more than just that. It also provides a one-time $600 payment to anyone receiving the disability tax credit. It would also expand the wage subsidy program to include more seasonal workers. But C-17 is stalled because all three opposition parties refused unanimous consent needed to pass legislation in a single day. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau mostly blamed the Conservatives. So because they didn't get their way two weeks ago, they continue to complain and play politics and they blocked help to Canadians with disabilities. 
Conservatives rejected the accusation. Mr. Chair, the mistake yesterday was Liberals shamefully saying no to allow Parliament to deal with that legislation and then disgustingly today trying to play petty politics on the backs of people with disabilities. That's shameful, Mr. Chair. The Bloc Québécois wants the Trudeau government to table a fiscal update, while the NDP says limiting help only to those who file the tax return and claim the disability tax credit is wrong. The problem with the Liberal plan is it completely misses 60% of Canadians who live with a disability. Advocates for those with disabilities have one message for Ottawa, sort it out. The government really needs to assess where their values are at and the opposition needs to take a look at their response. Um, Canadians with disabilities make up 22% of the population and we are definitely voters. In the meantime, the Prime Minister said his government would try to find some other way to get this one-time $600 payment out the door to those who filed for a disability tax credit. Details? TBD, Donna. All right. David Aiken in Ottawa, thank you. Tonight on Coronavirus, the new reality. We clearly don't understand the pathology of it yet. Tackling the ultimate medical mystery. I don't think we've ever experienced something like this. The race to crack the COVID code. It's a precarious point for all of us. Tonight at 7 on Global.